In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a ChatGPT clone in just a few minutes using the OpenAI API and radio library. So you can go and show it off to your friends. Hello and welcome to BruteFab, where we build and help build. Now, let's be honest. Interacting with applications with the command line isn't the most user-friendly way. So today, we're going to solve that problem by using the library called Gradio. Gradio is an open source Python library that allows you to quickly create customizable UI components in Python and share them in just a few lines of code. This way, you or even your non-technical friends and family can interact with your application. <laughs> that was easy. So let's dive in. Let's first install the library and look at a very simple example. To install the library, we're going to use pip install radio. Okay, once it's installed, I'm going to create a new Python file and call it gradio demo.py. The first step is, of course, just import the gradio library. Next, I'm going to paste in the very simple example code defining a grating function. Let's first run the code and see some results. Then we'll come back for the explanation. All right, once it's running, we can see it's running on a local URL. So I command and click, and we can see that we've got a simple interface. Now let's come back to our code window and see what exactly is going on here. Notice that we're using the Gradio interface class. So the interface is Gradio's main high level class. Inside here, we have to specify at least three parameters. First is the function to create the GUI for. In this case, it's the function greet we defined earlier. Next, the desired input component and the desired output component. In this case, these are both texts. The input is the text we input to the function and the output is what the function returns. So this is the return. If we go back to our application, we can try type something through that. And if we hit submit, we can see the output is hello root web. All right. In addition to the Gradio interface class, Gradio actually provides a convenient high level abstraction just for creating chatbot UIs. It's called the chat interface, which is what we are going to use to create our chat GPT clone. Let's first look at an example with a dummy function. Again, we'll first see what does it look like. Then I will explain. I will first get rid of this and paste in the new code. Once I save it, you notice that we're using the chat interface class this time, and we're defining a function called alternatingly agree. So when we type in the message in the chatbot, it will reply alternately between these two messages. Let's run this and take a look. Okay, let's open it up. As you can see here, we've got a simple chatbot UI. And now if I type in anything, you can see that it's replying with alternating messages, which we defined in the function. So what exactly is going on here? You can see that it is similar to the interface class, but it must have a specific signature, which means the function we're defining should take two arguments, message and history. Let's look at each of them. Message is just a string that represents the user's input, and history is a list of lists representing the conversation up till that point. Each inner list consists of a pair of strings, the user input and the bot response. The output of the function you defined is the bot's response to the particular user input message. Lastly, when we use the chat interface class, only the function is the required parameter here. Okay, now that we got the basics out of the way, let's move on to the most exciting part, connecting our Gradio UI to the OpenAI API. To start, I will create a new Python file and call it chatgptclone.py. I will start by importing all the necessary libraries and setting up the API key. For this, I will just copy in the code. We're using OpenAI Python package and Gradio. We're loading in the API key as the environment variable. If you're not familiar with this process, go ahead and check out the first video of this series where I explained in detail how to set it up. Now let's start to define our function. I'm going to call the function my GPT, and here we're going to take in message and the history. Inside of this function, we're going to make our API call. We're going to define the messages we're going to send as an empty list. 
let's start off with just append a user message. The content is the message which we'll be asking later. Now let's define the response and use the chat completion API like so. So here we're using the model GPT 3.5 Turbo again. And for the messages, we're going to pass in the message list. And for the temperature, we're going to use 1.0. After the API call, let's extract what's inside of the function. I'm going to name it output. The output is going to equal to the content of the API call. And lastly, let's just return this output. OK, that should get us going. Lastly, let's just run this app with Gradio. I'm going to call gr at interface. And inside here, let's pass in the function and launch. I'm going to save this file and run it this time with Gradio chat GPT clone. By doing this, we can see our file change in live. Click on this link. Now we have our chatbot spinned up. I'm going to put the chatbot on the left, the code window on the right. And now we can begin chatting. As we can see, we have successfully accessed the OpenAI API and built a simple web app. But there is a problem. If we keep chatting, I'm going to ask, what is the largest city in the world? And it will give us a response. But what if I ask, what did we talk about? It will respond by saying, I apologize, but it does not remember previous conversations. That's because currently, each time we send a request to the model, we only send one user message. In order to have the chatbot to have the memory of our conversation, we actually need to send the entire conversation as a request, as in provide more context. But how do we do that? Previously, we learned that the history parameter of our function keeps a record of the conversations between the human and the assistant up until that point. That means each time you submit a message, the history list becomes longer. So what we need to do is that first, we need to create a new request list that contains the history of our conversation and send that list as the request to the API. Now to do that, I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to create a new list. We can just call it chat history. Then we need to unpack the history parameter and reformat it for the request messages. I'm going to copy in the code. This for loop will unpack the history, reformat the messages in order for us to make a request. Lastly, we just need to append the final question, which is the current chat message. Now we just need to change the messages to chat history. OK, I'm going to save this file. Let's refresh this page. OK, let's ask the same question. What is the largest city in the world? And let's ask, what did we talk about? As you can see, it has remembered what we talked about now. And then to make it more realistic, if we go to ChatGPT and start chatting with it, we can see that it is streaming the answer as it's completing. But if we go back to our chatbot, we can see that it's thinking and after it's done writing the answer, it will spit out the answer as one go. If we want to create the realistic effect in the next section, let's talk about how to stream the answers. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and grow our community of like-minded people. All right, let's get back. To stream our answer, we need to do a few changes. First, in the API request, we need to set stream to true. And then when we set the stream data to true, the response we get from the API will not be one big single object. Instead, it will give us a list that contains chunks of objects. And inside of each chunk, it will have one word. So what we need to do is that we need to unpack this list and send it to appear on the screen one by one. So here, instead of output the response, what we want to do is first we define a variable called partial message, which will initialize the string. Next, we'll use a for loop to iterate through the response. And for each chunk, if it contains a word, we will add it to the string. So over here, the structure looks like this. And in the end, instead of return, we're using yield, yield out the partial message. We're just going to get rid of that. Lastly, we're going to need to add in Q, which means it will queue the results. Save this and refresh the page. If we ask a question again, tell me about OpenAI API. And as we can see, 
it's now streaming the results as it's writing. Okay, very cool. Now you might be wondering why. Why go through all these troubles just to have a clone of ChatGPT? At the end of the day, you can always just go to their website and ask away. Well, it allows you to customize the chatbot. This way, you can build the application with the parameters available to the API that regular users do not have access to. For example, here with the few lines of code, you can customize its title, description, give it some examples, and add additional inputs such as system prompt and a slider that controls the output tokens. You can also explore more about blocks, which allows you to add more customizations to your app. I encourage you to go to the official Gradio documentation to explore more about everything you can do with this awesome library. Now, once you are happy with your application, if you want to share it with anyone, what you can do is inside of the launch, just set share equals true. And once you have that, let's rerun the code again. You can see that it has generated two links. One is the local URL and one is the public URL. So this is the link you can share with anyone. So for example, now if I open my phone and I can go to this website, here you go. You can open this everywhere and start chatting with it. Now, that's very cool. Thank you so much for watching. It's my personal mission to learn and help learn, build and help build. So if you find this video helpful, you know what to do. Smash the like button and get subscribed. Check out my other tutorial videos. And until next time, happy building.